Hey everybody, Mr. Dolan here. Gonna give a quick video example of how to do a limiting reactant problem with grams. Um, and if you have any questions about this, please make sure you hold me, contact me, leave some comments in the uh, comment section below. Uh, but anyway, we have a question here where we have um, C6H12O6 plus six O2s. Um, those are our ingredients, and those will react to form six CO2s and six H2Os. Um, so we have our chemical recipe, our chemical equation. Um, for time, I've balanced this one, but if you ever get a question like this, you always want to make sure, is my chemical equation balanced? So I always double check, is the equation balanced? And if the answer is yes, then you can actually keep going. Um, and for quizzes and stuff, if I give you the coefficients already in here, you can assume that it's been done correctly and it is balanced for you. So the question is, a group of students has 28.7 grams of C6H12O2, this one, and we have 14.8 grams of O2. So it's telling us how much of each reactant, how much of each ingredient we're starting with. Well, the question is, how much will we actually be able to react? If we just dumped these all together, um, there's a really good chance it's not the right ratio and we'd have one of these left over. So the question is, what is the limiting reactant? In other words, which of these two reactants, which of these two ingredients runs out first? And the reason that's important is because whichever ingredient runs out first, that limits how much this reaction can happen. And so that limits how much of our product we can make. So the second question is, well, how many grams of H2O or water can be made? So in a limiting reactant problem, the typical process is first up, balance your equation. And then in the second step, we do a stoichiometry calculation where we pick a product and we figure out for each of the reactants how much of that product we can make. Well, always take a look and say, is there a question that's going to ask us for a specific product? And if there is, then let's do all of our calculations based on that product. We could still figure out the limiting reactant based on CO2, but it would just take us more time because then we'd have to go back and figure out, well, how much H2O would that be? Which you could do. It would just be an extra step. So setting it up. Again, we're going to use a proportion where we have our fraction our equal sign and our secondary fraction. And the top is always what does the question want us to find? And the bottom is always what does the question give us or what is given to us? We're going to do this twice, once for each ingredient. Okay, so the given on my first one here is going to be 28.7 grams of C6H12O6. And the want is the water. So my x grams of water. Now remember to do this the units need to line up correctly. So on both sides here we need to just transfer those units over. So grams of H2O will also be on the top on the other side and grams of C6H12O6 will be on the bottom on both sides. Okay, now when we have grams, we got to be asking ourselves, where do we get the numbers now to go in front of this right side fraction? And you got to remember if you have grams, you're going to need the periodic table, but you also need these numbers from the balanced equation because this is our recipe. This recipe is saying if you take one mole of C6H12O6 and you react it with six moles of O2, it will react to produce six moles of CO2 and six moles of H2O. The problem we have is we don't have a measuring device that measures moles. We only have our electronic balances which measure grams. And so what we got to do is we got to go to this equation and we got to say, okay, the top of this fraction is supposed to be grams of water. Well, what we need to do is figure out how much does six moles of water weigh? Okay, so you go to the periodic table and you say, okay, 
I know a hydrogen is 1.01, .01 and my equation says I have two of those, so I'm going to multiply that by two, and that gives me 2.02. .02. And I know oxygen on the periodic table is 16.00, .00. and according to my equation, there's no subscript, so that's going to be a one. That's 16. So one mole of H2O is 18.02, and that's grams for one mole. But my recipe says I need six of those. So what do I got to do? I got to multiply that by six. And when I do that, I'm going to get 108.12 grams. This number right here is what we're going to put in front of the grams of H2O on our fraction. So again, to recap that real quick, if you ever have grams, you need both the mass from the periodic table, but you also need this coefficient from our recipe. The recipe says you're going to make six moles. Well, that's how many grams that would be. Then we need to do the same thing for the grams of C6H12O6. But you have to keep in mind, it's one mole of C6H12O6. So I'm going to go to the periodic table. I got six carbons, figure out what that weighs. I got 12 hydrogens, figure out what that weighs. I have six oxygens, figure out what that weighs, and then add them all together. And when you do that, you're going to get this number right here, 180.18. Six carbons, 12 hydrogens, six oxygens added all together. And our recipe says we need one of those, 180.18. Okay, now this is just a simple cross-multiply question. I multiply across on both sides of the equal sign. So I'd have x times 180.18 equals, I'm not going to worry about the units, just to make it a little bit easier to see, 28.7 times 108.12. To get x by itself, I would have to divide both sides by 180.18. Okay, I'll put this as a little x, that's a little time sign. And when you solve that, you're going to get this number right here, 17.22 grams of water, H2O. But I'm not done, okay? What I've done here is I have figured out if, that's the key word there, if we react all 28.7 grams of the C6 H2O6, it is enough to make 17.22 grams of H2O. But we got to do the same thing now for our other ingredient, our other reactants. we got to see how much can the 14.8 grams of O2 create. So make my proportion. Again, the want, what does the question want us to have, goes on top. What does the question give or what's given goes on the bottom. We are given 14.8 grams of O2. We want the same thing. It's still grams of H2O. Okay, well that's kind of nice because we already then on this side, we already know what we're going to do for the top. It's still the weight, the grams for six moles of H2O. So it's still going to be that 108.12 grams of H2O. But now on the bottom, we're trying to find grams of O2. So again, we're going to use the periodic table because it has grams. But we also need to go back up to our recipe and realize the recipe is saying you need six moles of O2 for that fraction. So I got to go to the periodic table. Again, oxygen is 16.00, but I have two of those, right? But then I got to multiply that by six. Again, because I have six of the O2s. And when you do that, you're going to get 192.00 grams. So again, cross multiply. To solve, you're going to have x times 192. I'm not going to put the zeros in there if you don't mind. And then we're going to have 14.8 times 108.12. Again, to get x by itself, you have to divide by 192 on both sides. And then when I solve, I will get 8.33 grams 
of H2O. So now we got to take a step back. And I got to say, okay, what did I just find out there? Well, what that's saying is if, again, the keyword there, if all of the O2 reacts, it is enough to make 8.33 grams of H2O. So we got to look at these numbers and we got to ask ourselves the question, what do we do with them? Do we add them together? Do we pick, subtract them? Do we pick one or the other? And so we got to go back to what we just said. If all of the C6H12O6 reacts, it's enough to make 17.22 grams of water. If all of the O2 reacts, the 14.8 grams, it's enough to make 8.33 grams of water. Well, the answer here is the thing that creates the smallest amount of product is going to be our limiting reactant. Why is that? Because if we use all 14.8 grams of O2, it'll make this much water. Well, notice we have enough of the other ingredient to make more water. So what that means is that once we have made 8.33 grams of water by combining our C6H12 and our O2s together, what just happened? We just ran out of O2. So all of the O2 got used up. Well, when that happens, when you use up all of one of your ingredients, we no longer have the ingredient to keep this reaction going. It stops, which means we have extra, we have excess of the C6H12O6. The limiting reactant is the O2 because it is only enough to make 8.33 grams of H2O. So what would be our answer for question number two? It would be this 8.33 grams of H2O.